Welcome to CAS 133 Hybrid Version, Columbia Gorge Community College, The Dells, Oregon. Now this video is going to be your introduction to the class. If you were in a regular full-time face-to-face class, you're going to be looking at five hours of lecture and instruction time. I promise you this video will be much shorter. So I'll kind of walk you through this. Some more of this may be addressed during the face-to-face -face session, but this way you'll always have it to come back to and look at again on the video if you forget something or have a question. So you arrive in the class, you have these things on the side. You'll notice there are little minuses here or pluses here. That means that you can expand or contract them. I have them open right now. You also notice a little arrow there that can push it over here. So if you have a bunch of stuff here you don't need, you can kind of get it out of the way. I sort of keep participants and activities there because those are the ones that I personally use most often. As you enter the class, be sure to read down through this and we'll talk about what you're going to need to do. Our emails are going to be right here each time. Obviously, there's some basic recommendations going into this class. It boils down to the better reader you are and the faster you type, the faster you'll get work done. If it takes you a lot of rereads to understand what you're being told or you type really slowly, plan on extra time because it will take you longer to get the class done. Since you will have some face-to-face -face time with a hybrid, the total class time should give or take around 10 hours. So you're going to have to be planning a lot of work time at home or at school or on the campus or something like that. The preferred software is Office 2013 365. If you're going to buy it for a personal machine, the cheapest place to buy it is at the CGGC, CGCC store, bookstore. Um, they're able to give you a student discount. There are sometimes students that try to use Macs, and this Mac, this class can be Mac friendly. It will use the Mac Office 2011, which is not as updated as the 2013, so there will be some differences they'll have to deal with if you're going to use a Mac. Also, if you don't have Office on your Mac at all and you want it, you'll be buying the 365. That's the one that will install on a Mac and then will let you have the Office 2011 on it. You do need a PC or a Mac for this class, an iTouch, an iPad, your phone, mobile devices, Linux operating systems, those types of things are not going to work for this class. You must have the textbook and it needs to be the new and updated version of the 2013. Older books will not work and you do need to have that by the third week of the class. The first couple of weeks you can get by on, but after that it becomes a lot harder. You can also go to Microsoft.com and you can go to their download section and they change this page all the time so you may not see the same thing but when you go to the download section you want to search for the PowerPoint viewer a 2007, a 2010, or a 2013 PowerPoint viewer will all work whichever one you can find download and install if you don't have a PowerPoint program on your machine which will let you see the class PowerPoints. If you already have a PowerPoint that's at least 2007, you can use it. Um, but if you have nothing or older, you will need to get the viewer until you purchase the Office 2013 version. If you're not going to buy it, you're going to come up to the campus and use it, I still suggest you put the viewer on because that way at home you can work on looking at the PowerPoints and only have to spend time on a computer someplace other than at home doing the actual projects. You'll need that all in place by the beginning of week three. When you get in the course, you're going to start with the Start Here video, which is what you're listening to right now. You're going to want to read the syllabus. In a lot of face-to-face -face classes, the syllabus gets read to you the first day. I'm not going to read it to you on the video. You can open it and read it. We'll take other time on the video for other things. Of course, content and guide, reading, grading rubric, those types of things. This is a hybrid class. It will meet on campus once a week, and you will have work to do either at home or on a college lab machine or a public library machine or something like that. Now, that said, hybrid classes can change dates, due dates, due times, class session times, because it's sort of like what is picked to be used that term. So that will all be in the syllabus each time to tell you where your first class session is, when it is, 
when you need to be there, those types of things. When is work due? There's some beginning of class work that has to be done. When is it going to be due? All of those types of things will be updated not only in the course shell, but will be updated in the syllabus so you do know. There are no set office hours, so unless you're asking a question during the face-to-face -face time, the rest of the time you will need to email one of us for information. Because I am used to teaching online and I teach online a lot, I really stay on my email. So you may find I'm faster at getting back to you um, than the person who's doing the face-to-face -face portion because that that's not really their job. They're not monitoring Moodle. I'm monitoring Moodle, which means the email part of it. You can ask either of us questions, but if you're in a hurry, I might be quicker. You'll have to check and see. I'm going to be watching my email. You shouldn't be over 24 hours, which means if you're waiting till 10 o'clock the night your work is due at midnight or you're waiting till 10 in the morning and your work is due at noon, that could be a problem. You may not get an answer back quick enough, so don't wait till the last minute. I try to check my email at least once every 12 hours and the rest of the time if I have my phone and I have, you know, tower and all those things, I try to check it as frequently as I can. That being said, if I type you an answer on my phone, it's already a well-known fact. I cannot type on those small little keyboards. They and I just do not agree with each other. So I will do the best I can and hopefully I can get you an answer pretty quick. It should never be over 24 hours, even though the college does allow me 48 hours for checking my email each time. This is a paperless class. You will not be taking any papers to your face-to-face -face class to submit. You will be submitting them all to me in Moodle. I will be doing all the grading. That is my role in the task. And giving you the feedback. So if you have questions on grades or feedback, it's best to contact Mrs. Hewitt so that I can get back to you what I was looking at. In Moodle, you will find all the materials that you need. Those are all there for you. You don't have to get any extra supplemental materials, those types of things. Projects from the books do, in fact, need to match the book pretty exactly. So if you are trying to use other software, like the Mac version or an older 2010 version of Microsoft, um, you're going to need to work to make sure those match. It can be done. It just takes a little bit more work on your part. You'll also be posting to a Moodle form at least once a week, sometimes it may be more, and you will do a reply for each post you do. Our emails are there again for you to contact, so we're going to continue on down here and talk some more. You'll notice that there are little check boxes over here. I do not see those, but those are there for your convenience and your use. When you've opened something, it will add a check box to it for you and it will allow you to know that you've been there. So if you start something and you have to go to class or it's time to eat or bedtime or whatever it might be that happens, um, you can come back and kind of see where you were. The start vi you hear video, your, your instructor introductions, your class syllabus, it's really important you read. You may want to even keep a copy printed of that. The assignment sheet tells you kind of what has to be done and when it has to be done. And so make sure that you have that. It may be a good idea to print that as well. Your course content, outcome guides, your grading rubric, knowing how it's being graded is helpful. Extra credit, yes there are extra credit projects available. This explains it. Late work policy, if you're going to run into problems with getting work in on time, it's a good idea to know what the late work policy is. And then the instructor's news forum. That's where I put in information um, of things I see, warnings, hints, suggestions, changes we've had to make. Microsoft likes to make changes as we go, so sometimes I have to put in the, oh, by the way, we need to change this type of information. One of the course requirements is you are logging in every 48 hours and you are checking that forum. Now, it's supposed to send you an email, but it's been broken three times in three weeks. So given that, don't count on that. Make sure you're logging in and actually looking. There's some more additional resources down here. College, uh, the QM requires the policy statements, so there they are. If you've never used Moodle, here's some Q&As, question and answers. Need help, here's the college tutoring link. If you're stuck, here's some things that might help. Now, since you have a face-to-face -face session, 
that may be your best place, but let's say you get stuck right after that and you need some help, send me an email. That's usually the best route to go, or at least send one of us an email. If you have technical type problems, like you can't get software installed, something like that, you can't figure out how to make Moodle work, Ron Watrous at the college is part of the college IT team, but his kind of focus is helping students with Moodle and technical issues with online classes. I do suggest you check with him ahead of time um, to make arrangements. He is out and about helping instructors, um, fixing things, and you know, occasionally even gets a vacation. So you want to make sure you make arrangements. Also, on the Dallas campus, if you're up there working in the library, they've been really good about answering students' questions and kind of helping unstick them if they get stuck. If you are on an IEP or you have a disability, medical need, anything like that, college is separate and you need to go up there. It's not like it carries over from high school. It's not like it carries over from any sort of a government program, anything like that. So you need to go up to the college and follow the steps here, get that information and take any paperwork, medical documentation, old IEPs, current IEPs, um, disability forms if you're working with like disabled veterans. I mean, any of those types of things you have, take those up, get a plan made. When the plan arrives to me, it starts. I cannot make adaptations, modifications, adjustments just based on your sending me an email and asking. I wish I could, but that is actually against the law. The plan starts when it arrives. So if you wait till the last week of the term to send me the plan by going up there late, it starts the day that the Disabilities ADA Department sends me the plan. It is not retroactive. It does not go back to the beginning of the term. So a good time to take care of that is now. Student services information and how to get sound working in a PowerPoint. If you've never used a PowerPoint with sound, this will kind of walk you through the steps that you have to do to get that to work. Now, to get the class started, this may change. It may not say Thursday by that time, but wherever it does say, it's basically going to be the academic honesty policy. You're going to go in here, you're going to open this up. You're going to need to go in here, you take the pretest, you read the materials, you take the post-test, and then you're going to email a copy to me. I do suggest you copy and paste my email address. Typos get you in trouble. You're also going to send a copy to yourself. Here's the link. You're going to open that up, take your pretest, read the material, take your post-test, making sure those emails get sent. Also, make sure you use full first and last names. I often have up to 60 students, and a lot of times there can be repeats of names. I have no way of knowing who you are if you just use a first name. Also, if you don't send yourself a copy and I don't get my copy, you cannot retake the test on the same machine. You'll have to find another computer to take the test on to be able to submit it. College policies are down here if you have any questions. Then there's a short cheating video you'll watch. You have a six question quiz to do. Again, this date may change, but that goes with whenever the first class face to face session might be. You have a form to introduce yourself on. There's some information about forums there and how to correctly do one. I will warn you that the week one forum has been acting up. They're still looking at trying to figure out how Moodle managed to break it. So hopefully by the time you're doing it, it will be fixed. If not, we will limp through it. Then you're going to move into week one. Now this is only about an hour's worth of work, give or take some. So that's kind of pre-work, work before you even get the class started. It's kind of your entrance ticket into the class. Then you need to move on to the actual week one work. It's down here and there's going to be a video for the hybrid and an introduction to week one video you need to start with. I'll be back to talk to you then.